Oh, he put it back to Sultai. Ooh, spicy. Sultai. The Sultan of Sultai. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was wanting me to get, um, God, what card was he wanting me to find for him? Something from old Ravnica block. James, are you on your, are you on your uh, stupid GP deck? I need to know for the stream. Are you on Spread or Stompy? Trying to be mysterious when he's about to be on camera in front of a lot of people. <laughs> I guess that's something most commander players don't really worry too much about. Oh, what are you playing? Here's my general. Playing 100 cards and something probably degenerate. Yep. <laughs> With varying degrees of, I'm going to try to get this degenerate thing off as quick as I can, or I'm just going to dirtle. Right. Like you said, uh, we got a bunch of people here that play commander and still want to have friends. So. Yeah. Well, none of them played Leovold because he is the I don't want to have friends deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, talking a little bit about the uh, deck coming up here, uh, James is going to be playing Scred, uh, which is a deck that has a bunch of snow-covered permanents and lands and whatnot. Um, and you just basically deal damage with snow-covered lands off of the uh, Scred card. You also play cards like, uh, uh, what is that card's name from Theros? Um, the dragon, Stormbreath Dragon. Um, really, really good card as a finisher, uh, or just in general. Storm, breath, dragon. Um, yeah, storm, breath, dragon. I need to fix that. Yo! Someone just punched it. Yep. Still shaking a little bit. Give people motion sickness. All right. Um, all right, so you got Stormbreath Dragon in this deck. You've got, um, is it Koth, I think is the name? Koth the ha of the Hammer or whatever? Yeah. The Planeswalker? Yeah, this guy. Yeah. Um, untap, target mountain, become a 4-4 four, four red elemental creature into turn, still a land. Basically turns your uh, mountain into a Gideon. Um, swing in. Uh, emblem with mountains you control, tap, deal one damage. So basically the whole whole point of the deck is just play a bunch of red spells, deal damage to the face based off the lands you have, and then have your lands beat up the opponent. So pretty interesting deck, I guess. Can Sounds sometimes cool. be annoying. A lot of removal. Um, and then Andrew's playing Soul Tide Death Cloud. It's like his pet deck, I want to say. Um, it is. It's, 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 it's crazy. Like I said, he's always asking me to see if I've got old, strange cl uh, cards that he can put in it. Right. So Death Cloud, each player loses X life, discards X cards, uh, then sacrifices X creatures, then sacrifices X lands. Basically, that's a, that's pretty much the win con of the deck, but you're also doing things like uh, Smallpox throughout the match, uh, Liliana of the Veil, uh, you know, making people discard or uh, lose their creatures, discard cards, I mean, just essentially taking control of the deck where they don't have any cards in hand and there's nothing they can do and you just win with uh, Treetop Village. Um, I think he's also playing uh, Baby Jace in this one. Um, let's see, uh, what's it? Jace, Varen's Prodigy. Uh, that was not the Baby Jace I was thinking of. Yeah, it's this Baby Jace. You're thinking of High School Jace Architect of Thought or whatever? Not Architect of uh, Thought. Yeah. Like, not architect. Old, old school or the... Not mine, Spelter, but the one I think that was still out in um, in Zendikar Block. Whichever that one that was, I think it was a three drop. Right. Oh, back in back in that day, we called it Baby Jace. I never played that one. I only, I only played the Architect of Thought like back in the day, but my back in the day is different than your back in the day. So. Oh, I'm <laughs> I'm still not that old of a player. I started playing in uh, original uh, Zendikar Block. So I started playing in Innistrad, so not far okay. after that. Yeah, it was, I think, shortly after World Wake. Um, a bunch of my friends that played CCGs were like, you're going to play one of these CCGs that we played. It was between L5R and Magic, and I just picked up both. So. What is it? Visions? 
He has ancestral vision. There's a lot of vision cards. Yeah, you know what I'm playing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. You're talking about the, uh, suspend? Yeah. Is it his ancestral vision? Uh, it's not ancestral recall, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's just one, it's just vision. Yeah. Uh, he's also playing ancestral vision. Uh, looks like he fetched and shocked and, uh, or did, did he shock? Or did he just bring him tap? Oh, he just brought him tap. Okay, so he's at 19. Alright, so we're going turn two. Now, this can be where he really takes people off their game, but he's just going to, uh, Explore, I believe that is. Yep. Uh, draw a card, play it. You can play an extra land this turn. What is it? Dark Slick? Uh, it looks like a Dark Slick Shores, yep. yep. Uh, Dark Slick Shores is a fast land. Looks like James is not doing too much. Um, he's got two snow covered mountains, and that's really it. What? Andrew's on the phone. I'll tell him that, Jeff. <laughs> so, Dane, when are you going to stop commentating and just start playing modern? Uh, I play slash run X Wing on Tuesdays. Uh, they are running modern or er, uh, epic right now. Oh. Um, it just happened we had enough people that I didn't have a slot, and I try to make sure that those guys get a chance to play. Okay, gotcha. So. Normally, I would be playing X-Wing right now and would stop by to commentate for a couple minutes before I head out. Fair enough. Is that a Kiora? Hang on a second. Did he, whoa. Did he just... Yo, he just said a Kiora in Modern. What the hell? Which Kiora is that? Oh. Um, Crashing Wave? That's, that's Crashing Wave. He played Kiora the Crashing Wave from Born of the Gods. Uh, I played that back in my band control deck a long time ago. Did it get lightning bolted? Uh, I think it did get bolted. Um, I'm not sure what he actually did. Uh, but for plus one until next turn, prevent all damage to be dealt by target permanent and opponent control. Neg one, draw a card, play, and you can play an additional land, which is a really good ramp. Um, but she did get bolted. But, man, that's actually a pretty interesting card for his deck. Honestly, I've seen him play this deck a couple times, and I don't think I've ever seen Kiora. Yeah, that's that. that's a new one. That's, uh, that's interesting. I, I, I cannot believe I just saw that. That just gave me a flash in the past, basically. So he's going to play a Liliana of the Veil. Uh, both of them are going to discard a card after the plus one. He's going to play a Lamp Return. He's going to stack, and I don't know what. Let, let's see. One, two, three. I think he's taken three so far. Are you at 17, Andrew? James, you're at 20. I'm at 20. Okay, that's a lot of land. Oh! Uh, was that a Thrice Horse? No, it's not a Thrice Horse. It might be Sakura Tribe, maybe? No. All right, so James just dropped his uh, cost. Uh, he's going to send a 4-4 mountain at Liliana. It's really good to get her off the field. Looking at James's ha or Andrew's hand here, he doesn't have much going on. He's going to play an explore, draw a card, play an additional land, which, honestly, looking at his hand, he doesn't really need to do. Jeff, thanks for the follow, dude. Definitely looks like a handful of land. At this rate, he'll be casting Emrakul next turn. Uh, <laughs> if he plays any more lands, doesn't look like he has much of a choice at this point. All right, so um, neither player is short on lands, really. James discarded a snow-covered mountain to the Liliana, so that means he definitely has at least as many lands as he needs. That is a Storm Breath Dragon. I showed you guys that at the beginning of the match. Uh, this is going to hurt a lot. So Storm Breath Dragon's coming in for four, uh, as well as the Mountain for four. So that's going to be eight total, sending Andrew down to nine. And he 
got a uh, looks like he got at least well I think it might be a little too little too late yeah but oh well hang on is that a smallpox <laughs> I believe that's smallpox in his hand so that's gonna be smallpox each player is gonna lose a life um, Uh, James is going to have to sacrifice. Wait, hang on. So James is going to sacrifice a creature, discard a card, and lose a life. Uh, all right. So, uh, sacrifices a land, takes a takes one life, and. Uh, Loses a creature, discards a card, all for two mana. That is a uh, quite an illustrious graveyard. Yep. So the top deck for James uh, seems pretty good. Tapping the four lands, no. I think he's just gonna go for it here, but I'm not sure. Oh, uh, well, that's a Chandra. I thought it was a storm. I thought it was a stormbreath dragon. Oh well, that is a Chandra. Whatever the new one is. You can barely hear me. Um. Uh, all right, how's this? This should be better. If you just scoot up a little bit, it should be good. All right. All right. Oh, that was Chandra. Yeah, sorry. No, it's just the... Uh, oh, it's broken. We're still working on the two, uh, two commentators set up here. It's not quite ideal yet. So that I'm sure we'll figure something out. Yeah. Chandra Torch of Defiance. Um, so, I assume you probably just did the plus one, dealt two damage to Andrew, brought in cost, and that was just going to pretty much be game over. Uh, because he would just be dead the next turn anyways, especially to a, uh, to a Scred or to a uh, Lightning Bolt. So, um, we're going to go ahead and go to sideboards here. Scred took it the first round over Death Cloud. Whoops. I was say it looked like Andrew just didn't draw any of his. He drew other a bunch stuff. of lands. Yep. Um, as for right now, both of these players are one and zero in the tournament. By the way, do you use uh, perfect fits for your stuff? Um, I've only got one deck that I've got double sleeved. Um, these things are awesome. Like the Dragon Shield perfect fits, like they fit in Dragon Shields. Because you know, I know, I know Commander yeah. players are pretty uh, love uh, love Dragon Shields. Yes. Because they all come in a hundred. But uh, uh, these things are really cool. Like they uh, got the smoky back and everything. I love them. Also, the smoky ones just have the. Uh, Smoky back is not okay. I thought so you can't see were. through the card. Yeah, I or thought the whole entire thing was smoky. No, nah, just just one side. Actually, in, in fact, the fr the front side is actually incredibly clear. Like it's it's really clear. There we go. I just turned up the mic, so you guys should definitely be able to hear me now. And him, he's really your both of us pretty cool. clearly. It's a lot louder. Yeah, I've got uh, one of my commander decks double sleeve, but it's just uh, I can't remember what perfect fits I've got for that. But. I just know whenever I first sleeved it, it was so full of air. That is the problem with double with uh, double sleeving is you just end yeah. up, especially with a hundred card deck. Yeah. Um, like it was just gigantic. 
cards would just slide and spill off it. What's up, Andrew? So many people with Andrew that hang out at the store and play Magic. Agreed. <laughs> So which Andrew is that? Uh, uh, Ivy. Okay. Uh, Bliss's friend. He's he's here sometimes. He just has a new baby at home, so he can't really come out for magic too much. He's usually here on Fridays. A uh, new set release on Friday. It's yeah. <laughs> There's a couple good cards that I need from it. There's like four cards I need. That's it. Well, eight cards that I need. Glory Bond Initiate. 3-1, exert him, he gets plus 1, plus 3, to, and lifelink to end the turn. Yep. Um, so I'm going to the SCG Open on uh, Saturday, um, playing basically mono white aggro with him, and uh, where is it? This guy, Lone Rider. Cool. Um, then he flips over into a 5-5, first strike trample lifelinker. Or nice. sorry, 4-4, four, four, but with like always watching and stuff like that, it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. Really strong. You playing the um, enchantment that gets some uh, vigilance? Yeah, the always watching. I'm yep. playing four of those. I need to find one more, but I, I've got three. I need to find one more by Friday. What rarity is it? Uh, just rare. Rare, okay. I don't know how many I have. But. Definitely trying to find one more. All right. All right, so oh. screw is getting stripped out, or uh, I think it's just the nuts loose. Should still be fine, though. It'll be fine right there, especially since I turned it up. <laughs> All right, so we got Pithy Needle. Um, we got Jace, Vince Prodigy on Andrew's side. We got Pithy Noodle on and on uh, James's side. Um, Pithy Needle, you name a card, activated abilities, except for mana abilities, cannot be activated. Um, I'm assuming James named Liliana. I'm just going to go ahead and just assume that's the one that he wanted to name. Um, so Jace is able to activate and draw and discard a card. I don't see any players taking damage just yet. That is a Pia and Kieran Nalar, but it's going to get remanded back to his hand to counter it and draw a card. That's the, that's the card that Andrew wanted me to find. Yeah, remanded. I wonder if that's good. one of mine. It's a very, very good <laughs> counter spell in modern when you tap out for something big and it just goes back to your hand. It's a really good tempo play. And it also gives you card draw, it replaces itself. Very important. So he's going to. Uh, what did he just do? Discarded the top four card. What did he play? I'm not sure. He like discarded like three cards and put one in his hand. Uh, yeah, they have a PPTQ here on Sunday. Um, it's like right after. What's up, Andrew? Uh, another Andrew. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's right after the uh, CG Open. Um, I don't know if I'll be playing in it because I'll still be up in Atlanta probably. Looks like he draws another Inquisition here. Yeah, there's always watching there. Yeah. I'm going to have to resleeve all these anyways. Might as well go ahead and do it. <coughs> so the like players are still mulling over what they need to do. Like I've had these pretty, no, sometimes perfect fits, like it, like all cloudy and stuff. I've never had that problem with these. Like I've, they've, they've stayed like really good looking. Like since I got them, I got these when I was down in Orlando for the Grand Prix. Cool. These still do not get cloudy or anything like that. They look amazing. That's what a month and a half of playing them is just no cloudiness. It's really nice. Looks like he's finally got 
Jace flipped yeah, over. Yeah, Jace flipped over. And he's gonna fetch. He's gonna, to, well, he's gonna go down to something. He's gonna 19. I was at a coffee shop earlier, but in Persona 5, not in real life. Guess who went through some random packs and found a uh, protein hole? That card's overrated. <laughs> I don't see why you play that. Then a small pox again here. Uh, each player loses a life. Loses or discards a card, loses a creature. What's up, Big Daddy Snow? But, uh, How you doing? And put it in, uh, sisters. I haven't yet. But. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He is. And the one of the evil guys is uh, like that that bald guy. Uh, the evil part looks just like Doctor Venture. Pretty sure they uh, pretty sure they just took all their inspiration in that game from uh, the Venture Bros. All right, let's see here. What's going on? Jace is at six. Jace obviously. is at six. I'm like I said. I'm pretty sure that Pithy Needle hit Liliana. Like, I, oh, that's a P and Kira Nolar. Maybe now I can actually show it. It's good, man. I don't know if he's playing Ancestral Vision in it now. Probably not. But uh, he's playing Baby Jace and freaking Kiora. Yeah. Like the one of the gods, Kiora. So, yes. Keeps your opponent from playing, and uh, yeah, it <laughs> does well. All right, Piet and Kieran. Uh, on the end of the battlefield, put two one one Thopter tokens on the battlefield. Sacrifice, deal two damage to target creature or player. Very good card, played in a lot of different modern decks. Kind of looking like Andrew has the opposite problem. I don't know. He's got a yeah. <laughs> that's a I think that's some uh, Maelstrom Pulse. <laughs> yeah, that was a Maelstrom Pulse. Tar <laughs> target non-land permanent. Andrew told him to play this deck. Obviously, it was you. You love this deck. That graveyard's looking almost like a dredge graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, one damage to the Jace. James is now racing the Jace ultimate with his uh, Thopter. What's the uh, ultimate on that Jace? Uh, Wish I could spell. Be great. Uh. Oh, how do I flip them? Uh, up to one target creature gets negative two, negative oh. So he has ultimate. You get an emblem whenever you cast a spell. Target opponent puts the top five cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So it just mills them. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad in this deck. <laughs> Very true. When your goal is to not let your opponent play magic, it's pretty good. Uh, he's played a relic of Virginitus here. I don't think Andrew's deck has any recursion, so it's not really going to do much except I guess draw my card. I don't, say, I don't think so. The only thing I well, yeah, the Jace it it helps it keeps the Jace offline, but it's already at six. So I mean, I mean, at some point he he had uh, Kitchen Finks in the deck. I don't know if he still does. But that's not gonna need any recursion because it's just persistent. I also just noticed that uh, Andrew is also now playing with uh, Dragon Sh or, uh, Ultra Pro Eclipse sleeves. Are you a spokesman for him? I'm not. <laughs> like this, this stream is not sponsored by uh, Dragon Shield or Ultra Pro. But if any of the like 12 people that are watching right now want to. Um, put us in touch with people that can do that. I mean, we'll talk. Yep. 
I feel so wrong like taking these sleeves off already, but I know for a big event I want to play brand new sleeves. So. Well, so I picked up a couple packs of the Eclipse uh, to sleeve the new EDH deck. And, um, uh, not too bad. I love um, them. I think it was a little rough with them, so a couple corners are already a little dinged up. Yeah, the corners get dinged up, but they don't tear. Like, that's the important thing. All right, that's a Thrag Tusk. It looks like uh, Andrew's going to go to five, maybe. He's going to have uh, Andrew exile the card out of his graveyard in response. He's going to sack the artifact and let him draw a card. I forget what it's called. Um, he's going to sack yep. Relic. There goes his graveyard. Life from the loam. Oh. Oh, that was not life. That was life from the loam, not Thrag Tusk. Okay. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. So he Inquisitioned. Um, looks like James has Spread. Uh, Eternal Scourge. Scourge. And I still don't know what that artifact is. I'm sure you guys know. Eternal Scourge is a card from Eldritch Moon. Is that... When it gets not targeted, you can exile cage, it. cage, is it? No, it's Eternal Scourge. Okay. Um, uh, here it is. Uh, Eternal Scourge. Yeah. Uh, whenever it's targeted, you can... Uh, whenever, whenever it's targeted, exile it, and you can play it from exile. So it just has a lot of recursion. And it, it doesn't get affected by uh, by exile effects. <laughs> looks like he might have played Scred, or did he discard? He discarded Scred. Okay. Uh, looks like Lightning Bolt is the draw on here. Uh, took out the Jace, so Jace is dead. Oh, it was Mind Stone. Okay, thank you. And I think he's swinging in. Oh, two thopters, two top, two thopters, and he made eternal scourge, eternal scourge on the ground. I cannot talk tonight. Um, so I think that's two to Andrew's face. Oh oh. Did he just dredge life from the loam. Neat. Do you playoffs in a bailoff? I didn't see it yet. Someone's playing an obstinate bailoff? He might be. I'm being distracted by commander deck list here. Oh, that's fine. Ow, what did it do? I was scrolling. Oh, he has an option to bail off in hand, okay. So that's three, four, five to the face. He's going to dredge life from the loom again, it looks like. So he's going down to 11. He's going to fetch for the Misty, go down to 10. RIP stream. What happened? It knocked the hell out of it. Oh, someone hit the... Yeah. Luckily, it's sturdy enough that it kind of goes back to where it was. Yeah, it was a nice upgrade from the previous frame. Oh, yeah. You can thank Andrew for that. 
with his uh, undercover engineer skills. Yeah, he's definitely put a lot of work into that whole big frame. Mm -hmm. It's just so he could shine right here. Or maybe not. I don't know. Uh, There's an obstinate Bailoff. He's going to gain four, go to 14. I assume James is not playing uh, Skullcrack, so. I'll say this is definitely a different Death Cloud than I've seen Andrew play. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. I think he just swung for one with a thopter. James fell into the trap. <laughs> Looks like he finally got a uh, death cloud in hand. Yeah. You smell that? I smell a GG. <laughs> smells like a Bailoff. Gonna swing it for four with the uh, Ops and the Bailoff. Uh, looks like James took it. What's that? And that's a death cloud. Yep. I don't know how much it was for though. So I think it was one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it was for five. Let's see. I think it's three black and X. Yeah. <laughs> so it's X and three black. Yeah. So we tapped three and then two. So yeah. Okay. So they, lose, they both lose two. Yeah. Late. He did it for three. Okay. Interesting. All right. So uh, James is down to two lands. He's going to draw a card here off Relic. Exile all cards out of graveyards. Keep in mind, we're on game two. Yeah. Uh, that is another option to Bailoff. Uh, he looks like he's going to gain four more lives. That is a Jay's Friends Prodigy. He swung four, put James down, down to eight. <laughs> so he has Jace on the ground. He has an option to Bailoff swinging in. He's got James to eight. James is just now trying to get back um, into the swing of things here. Swinging in again. Coming for four with the Bayloth. Play a Kiora. He's going to plus one just for no reason at all. Because nothing he has is going to deal any damage. Well, that will. So James is at four. Andrew is able to swing with a 4-4 next turn. Gonna... Oh! Thanks, David. Take your hand off. We don't need to experiment with it. We know it moves. <laughs> it stops pretty well on its own. It's okay. It's always <laughs> alright to have a disco option every now and then. It's fine. Then. I was putting it in the right spot. <laughs> He's going to bolt and spread the obstinate Bayloth here. Wow. Alright. Mm. That was in response to uh, Jace's ability. So he's going to plus Kiora. <laughs> preventing damage from the Pithing Needle. Good play. <laughs> I feel like we're watching a uh, Pro Tour right now. James can't draw any more lands. Okay. Draw on the discard. Okay, not bad. <laughs> Trying to decide what he wants to get rid of here. 
drop down the swamp. Prevent damage from the pithy needle again. Okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I, I feel like we're just kind of. <laughs> feel like we're kind of just you know playing for the weekend here. That's a cough, and it's gonna get remanded. James uh, taking the dice off of Kiora and picking her up. <laughs> I don't think planeswalkers are used to just being picked up by uh, opposing people. And that's uh, that's double, double Liliana. Release. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Ultimate Kiora, I believe. What did wait? He just ultimate Kiora. Someone playing James didn't draw for turn. Oh. Well. Got Liliana. He ulted Kiora at the beginning of your instep, put a 9 9 blue cracking creature <laughs> onto the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. And he also That's played a little Liana. <laughs> All right, game two with 13 minutes left. Woo! A little celebratory dance. Oh, this was game one. No, sorry, no, game three. Two. My bad. It's not as bad as what we had. We were tied 1 1. Well, that I was mean, a very grindy I, match. We did that. We, we did more than that. We went to 55 minutes and came one. Like, Rough. <laughs> or 45 minutes. I would say first yeah. two rounds have been game three and pretty much the full entire time. I haven't gotten myself to pick up that deck since that day. Which deck? Uh, Esper with the shadows in it. Esper with the shadows? The death shadows. Oh, so... Yeah. You were playing Esper in modern? Right? It was such a change from what I used to do. So much I mean, that. you still were playing death shadows, but it was... Uh... But it was just like a 180, man. You just went like straight to like, kind of like, control -y. I mean, you were Suicide Zoo, right? Mm-hmm. You guys and you're changing up decks. Turn three to Dirtle and to uh, Dirtle, Dirtle, Dirtle. Thank you, Evan, for staying consistent. Wait, how am I consistent? <laughs> I oh, Just playing your, spirits all the time? Yeah, then? playing your spirits. I also have elv uh, elves, though. Well, it doesn't help that uh, cards move in and out. But, you know. Yeah. Well, not in modern. Just move in. I mean, spirits just stays the same unless they print another spirit lord or something like that, and it would change. But. Yeah. Yo. Well, EDH, though we recently had an unbanning and a banning. Tops are cheap now. Yay, maybe I'll start playing with tops. This commentary excels at everything. I'm not very good at seeing uh, seeing sarcasm through uh, text, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say thank you anyways. <laughs> Unless you're saying I excel at uh, sleeving up a deck, that's what I'm doing right now. Like while we're waiting in between uh, in between games, I'm sleeving up my deck for uh, Star City Open. Just go ahead and get it out the way. You know, with like 10 minutes left, you would think they would. Uh Try to move on a little bit You would think they would move faster, but no. <laughs> Once it got to 21 minutes left, they were just like, alright, how can I draw this out and go to turns? The better question is, how do I never play against Scred and Modern ever again? I think I've heard the name before. I don't think I've ever seen it played. So. Spread is just the name of, of the burn card. It's like a lightning bolt, but it deals damage based on how many snow covered permanents you have. Yeah. People will complain about everything. Sorry, that was for David, not you guys. 
I assume you guys are cool. Eh, we're, we're fine. I mean, do I really know what I'm talking about? Probably not. Probably not, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Some people don't know how to play magic. I play magic okay. They'll talk about it. Oh yeah, he wasn't really in the booth per se, he was just kind of here. So we got another relic of Progenitus. Yep, relic turn one, that looks like a turn one polluted delta from Andrew, maybe? I think. Alright, so... Is it a polluted delta or a dark slick shore? I can't tell. I'm not sure. Oh, I think it's a uh, uh, watery grave. I wish I could enhance... I'm gonna set up a donation button on the stream for people that want to donate money to the stream so we can get better equipment like cameras and stuff. Uh, that would be cool. 19... Yeah, it's a watery grave. Okay. All right, so we got uh, three lands on James's side. Andrew's looking at two lands on the field. That's going to be a smallpox, and he's going to play a misty rainforest. So James is going to scry in response using scrying sheets. He's going to make uh, him exile his misty. And then we're going to looks like it's going to resolve. Each player going to discard a card. <laughs> discard a card, lose a land, lose a life, lose a creature if applicable. He's going to pass with the three mana open and uh, Relic of Regenitus up. Like Andrew's kind of deciding what he wants to do here. David excels at losing to me in standard. <laughs> I know that much. So he played a swamp, or he fetched a swamp, so we're going to go. Down to 17. Hmm. Well, I don't know the play here because I don't know the deck. I'm sure Andrew is deciding what he wants to do here would be a good idea. And uh, looks like it's going to be another smallpox. It's going to scry sheets in response. He is losing lands. It's going to exile a card out of his graveyard. It's going to be an abrupt decay. You're going to go to the graveyard maybe here. <laughs> well, looks like you discarded an explore. He's discarding explore. Putting his uh, overgrown tomb into the graveyard. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I figured he would want the green. I guess blue is a little more important right now for him, uh, and that might be why. Coming coming down in a second here, he's going to probably want to use that. Exile a card out of the graveyard, okay. I guess he's trying to keep him off of Jace activating into a Planeswalker. I guess you can stay awakening into a Planeswalker. Alright, there is a land. He's going to shock. And I think he's just going to play Kiora. Yep, here it goes. That's going to be Kiora. I don't think she's going to be very long for this world. 
excel at everything I do. I told him you excel at losing to me in standard. How does this word pick up yeah. over there? Hmm? Mm. So it looks like Kiora got lightning bolted. That's a bolt that doesn't come to his face, though. Hmm. I think here he's probably just going to. He's going to play. I think next turn he's going to make them. Uh, he's going to smallpox again. And someone and he knocked got, the stand. Uh, it was David again. Um, that's an eternal scourge. Will you stop knocking the freaking stream setup? That wasn't me. That was you. Well, it's not me. Watched you do it. It wasn't him. Oh. I was still, I still don't. <laughs> If I did, I would do it excellently. <laughs> Smallpox would be very, very good here. Uh, instead, he's just going to abrupt decay the Relic of Regenitus. Going to make him exile the card in response. And then Smallpox. Everybody goes down. James Pass with not much you can do here, and that is Inquisition of Kozilek. He's gonna magma jet him, I think, or magma. Uh, yeah, I think that's magma jet. Yeah. Yep, that was Magma Jet. Bird 2, Scry 2. Yeah, James is getting back on lands now. Yeah, not much you can do though, because he's been discarding a lot of cards. Ooh. He's going to explore. Yep. Draw. Oh, well. All right. James is going to scry into turn, land to hand. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, he's making a comeback on lands. Let's say he needs a timely uh, death cloud or something. Uh, a death cloud would be amazing right about now. That is a cough. That yep. is a remand. Uh oh. Maybe you can get a. Oh, hang on. Yep, that's a Liliana. Yep. He's going to play Lily. Make him discard a scred. Looks like Koth is about to hit the ground again. And James is back on five lands, it looks like. Well, maybe not. Yep, yep, five lands back for James. And Koth again. And here he comes. Untap Mountain. Come in for four at Lily. Lily is dead. Oof. I wonder if he took the treetop villages out, because I haven't seen them come out at all. Yeah. So That'd be really very, good right now. <laughs> it's very different from the last time I saw it. So. Let's see, he had kitchen finxes. Uh-oh, I'm having a flashback from... Oh, no, that's another Chandra. So he's going to... Let's see what else to do with Chandra. I guess he's just going to plus to do the burn. No? He's going to float the two red. And is that freaking Goblin Rival Master? Hang on. No way. I think that's Goblin Rival. That's Goblin Rival Master. Wow. Wow. Um, that's, uh. And it looks like, yeah, that's over. Andrew cannot keep him off the game plan. He just drew lands, got back into his threats, and that's just, uh, just how it goes sometimes in Magic. Yeah. Goblin Rabble Master is uh, pretty gross. Yeah, it was, uh, he brought it back. He got he got it stabilized, turned the corner. 
and we're out of time actually for round two. Yep. Very nice, uh, very nice timing. He beat him pretty much as time expired. I'm gonna go check on my X-wing players for just a sec. Oh, you. Stop bringing up Jace. <laughs> all right, well, Scred just won a match. We can all lament the magic we used to love because this deck is around. 